Hey guys, my name is Panjamath and in this video we are going to learn how we can use Django. Django is a super fast, secure Python framework using which you can build web applications. So in order to get started using Django, just go and visit this particular page and just put this particular page link in the description so that you can directly come and see whatever the information you need to know about the Django. I'll be working with you throughout this particular project, so you don't have to actually visit this particular page. But it's good if you go to this page and just start reading what actually Django is and how it can make your life easier as a web developer. So this particular page is the main page of the Django. You can see the documentation here if you are like stuck anywhere in the video. It's like very difficult documentation, but once you get hold of this particular documentation, you will understand how easy the Django is. So in order to make the Django work on the system, we need to have Python installed. Just have to go to python.org slash downloads and download the latest version of Python. It is available for Mac, Windows, Linux, whichever the operating system you are using right now. Another important thing I need to tell before we start is uh, you need to have VS Code installed on your system. VS Code is a text editor, uh, moreover like IDE. It's freely available for Windows, Linux and Mac. Uh, so you can download it uh, and you just have to install it. Once you have this two softwares installed on your system, we can proceed using Django. I'm in my projects folder. You can create any kind of folder in your system. Once you create this particular folder, make sure you open up your terminal and let's just check whether Python is actually installed on our system. If you're on Mac, just type Python 3 dash dash version. If you are on Windows, this command won't work. You just have to type Python dash dash version. So, as long as you can see this version is printed and it's greater than three, we are good to go. Once Python is installed, we need to install this particular Django framework on our system. So, installing it is very easy. You can just click download here, and you'll get the link how we can install it. Just one single command, I won't be copying pasting it, but you can copy paste it also. It's just hit install Django. I already have it installed on my system, so it's not installing, but if you are running it for the first time, it will install the Django on your system. You can just copy paste it or you can just type it out however I type it here. Once Django is installed on your system, you just need to go to this particular project directly that would be cd desktop projects in on my case but you can change it also let me just clear it the screen and in this particular project directly we'll be start creating django project so creating your first django project is very very easy so let me walk you through it we just have to type django admin start project and you have to name that particular project. I'll just type my project name as my app. Why not? It's uh, not my app, my shop. Why not? It's my shop. So once this particular line is executed, you just have to go to that particular project file which Django created for us and you just have to do ls. Once you do ls, you can see all the files it created us. We'll be learning what is this manage.py and my shop folder which it have created. But before we learn it, we just have to open this particular folder using Visual Studio Code. You just have to drag it onto Visual Studio Code icon on your Windows or Mac. And this particular folder is opened up Visual Studio Code. It created two particular 
files for us eh? that would be one folder named my software and one manage of ty we'll be learning what are these folders and what does this setting for ty means what is this url wcgi wsgi.py etc once we proceed this video series but as of now you don't have to worry about anything you just need to open up one terminal here just like go in here and click in terminal and this terminal gets opened you can use this particular terminal which was opened previously also but i like using this particular integrated terminal so that i can understand what's happening for better way just have to type one single command and we are good to go and we can understand whether the django is installed properly on our system and whether this project is ready and we can run this server so the command which i am looking forward would be python3 manage.py run server this particular command will let us run the server of this particular web app make sure you type python for your windows and if you're on mac or linux just type python3 once this particular command is here and we just have to click enter and it will get some files for us but don't worry about that we just need this particular message here that would be django version script.1.6 doesn't matter the question might be different starting development server at this particular link and quit the the server with the control c just have to open up this particular link let me just copy paste it and open it up in the web server up so this particular server is ready and it's serving from this particular project file so we have successfully installed django on our system and we are good to go so don't forget to subscribe to this particular channel and see you on the next video Hey guys, my name is Manjunath and in this video, we are going to learn more about Django file structure which we got from last video which we have installed Django and we have successfully ran this particular application. I have stopped the server but if your server is still running, let it be like that. I'll just run it again in my system. That is Python 3 manage.py run server. If you are on Windows, just make sure it is just Python 3, not I mean Python, not Python 3. If you are on Mac, just type as I typed, that is Python 3 manage.py run server. Once you ran this particular server, if you open up 127.0.0.1 colon 8000, that is the same number which they give here, then you will get the server running. Let me start by talking regarding the basic folder structure which we got db.sklite we are not going to talk in this particular video there is dedicated video for db.sklite just see it in the database models video you will i'll explain what is this particular file let me go to next file that is manage.py in manage.py we will be doing all the administrative stuff we are not going to type anything in this particular folder but whatever we require django to be doing that particular thing we can command using this particular file that is example of this is here only my python3 manage.py run server manage.py is this particular file and run server is the command which is used for running this particular server that can be done by using this particular file and django takes care of creating server for us by itself so you don't have to focus much regarding this particular file we just have to run few commands which will be running whenever we require it to be ran now the next folder is my shop that is the same name as the main project name which you have given when you ran django admin start project main my shop and this folder name is also same as my shop so let me start by looking at 
the important file in this particular file structure that is settings.py. Settings.py is used for making sure certain setting is done in a certain way which we want whenever we require it to be used. For example, this particular installed app settings, whenever we are going to create new application or we are going to install certain application from the internet by using tip command, we are going to come here and we are going to add another line which indicates another app is installed. Middleware, we are going to not to worry about this particular thing right now and templates we are going to go we are going to use this particular feature in third video so if you want to like understand just skip to that video but uh, other than that nothing is there in, to explain in this particular thing and there are certain other things which is database for that also i am going to make dedicated video where i will be explaining just understand that this particular file includes all the settings for this particular Django project. So if you want to change something in the Django, we have to come here and we have to add certain line using which we can change. If you want to like know more about this particular file, you can go to Django documentation. You can go just by clicking this particular link in the server main page or else you can check the description also. I'll just put one link to, to Django documentation for uh, understanding more regarding the settings.py file. Other than that, there is urs.py. This particular file is used for uh, serving certain URLs from the Django. That is, if you want to serve slash admin, slash about, slash services, anything like that, uh, we have to come here and we have to put it here admin is already present so if i just go to slash admin i can see there is certain thing in here we don't know regarding how we can get this user name password right now but we'll figure out in like next upcoming video also. so we don't have to worry regarding it but as of now let's just focus on this url patterns which is used for sending certain http response to the front end that is this particular page also is being served from this file but django does it for us so we don't have to put any extra thing in here but if you are going to change this particular page we need to modify this particular file that we'll be doing right now so in django everything is done using apps you can think apps as folder structure using which you can do certain functionality for the user for example if you are building a e-commerce site cart can be one app products can be one app and something else shipping details can be one app itself so all these things are apps which will be the folder in this particular file structure we are going to create one app right now which just serves the file for us that is if user goes to slash about we are going to display about if user just comes to this particular link that is the index page which we are going to serve certain page using the app itself so let me start by creating one app so in order to create the app we have to run, cert, run certain command that is django admin start app and we can name this app as anything i will be naming it as pages so once i ran this command a new folder structure is created it's actually similar to this particular folder structure but there are certain extra files which we require it for this app to be functional let me start by going to views file this views file is the meat part of this django app by using this particular file we are going to serve anything we want to the user if you want to make any kind of calculation or if you want to ask database to get certain item that time we are going to use this particular file here we can write python function that is 
that starts by writing defining that this function no? and let me name this function as home page okay once i name this function no? i have to add certain parameter for it it accept http request that is inside request object because whatever we are going to send from here no? that is slash about slash admin slash contact whatever it is no? it's http request so we require this request object to perform certain operation in this particular function. So let me start by writing this function. Usually a function has certain calculation or like certain operations for it, but in the end we have to return something. So in this particular function, we can return hello world. But you have to understand returning hello world as a plain text won't do any good for us because we have to send it using HTTP response. So that's why Django gives us one very good helper that we can just import from Django.http import HTTP response. Using this particular HTTP response object, we are going to return the hello world. So let me just type HTTP response here and we are going to send hello world. Now you got to be thinking if I just write this much will the server work. Uh, first let me just run the server before I do any kind of change. Once the server is running still it's not doing any kind of change. It's not doing any kind of change because we don't know what's happening when the browser hits this particular url before that we have to link this particular pages app to our main app folder that we can do it by going to settings as i said earlier if you want to add certain app from the internet or from our own folder structure we can just come here and we can just write the name of the app itself so once i write the name of the app it will uh, that is pages so once i write the correct name of the app itself so it ran the server again and now it knows what and what is this particular app and how we can use this app so if i again go back to here and reload this folder nothing happens because we require this particular url folder to tell us that what happens when we hit the that slash route it can be slash it can be about or it can be contact anything it can be so whatever it is we have to put inside this particular file in this file we just have to type path and if it is like home page we don't have to uh, write anything here it's empty if it is empty that is that means it's just the slash i guess it should work or we how to put this I'm not sure like if certain error comes we'll just fix it later stage so let me just type path and once i put this particular single quote i need to link this particular apps view fold uh, files home page function so let me just close this thing and come back to this particular folder if i want to link this particular thing from the page we have to import it first that would be from pages dot views import the view name i mean the function name which we require is home page so we just have to come here and type home page and once we type home page we just have to put it right here and when we come here it will just uh, display hello world let me walk you through this particular thing again when user hits slash uh, that time this particular file gets executed uh, and when this file executes uh, it will look for what is there in the main route uh, that is slash uh, and it goes and it search for home page uh, and home page is the same thing which we imported from uh, pages dot views uh, and if you go to pages app that time we can find in the view what we are going to return that is http response hello world let me 
try to do same thing for slash about if i go here it says nothing found up but it's okay we are going to fix it just have to come back here to urls dot py and we just need to add path and we just have to put about slash don't forget that slash it will give certain weird error if we don't put the and here we are going to write about page which we need to import from pages dot views you are seeing error here but it's okay we are going to write this particular function in the views folder so i just have to go here and create another function that is def about page which will take request and it should return http response and this response would be this is about page okay once i put this particular thing the server should run fine and if i come here if i refresh it shows me this is about page but the thing is just writing this particular thing is not enough for us to build something and you can write html also here so if i want to write something like h1 and i can put entire tag itself so if i write h1 this is about page if i refresh this as you can see this is h1 tag but typing html in here it's like trouble so we have to render template for this and how we can render the template we'll see it in the next video so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you soon in the next video so in last video we have successfully created views and we have linked this view to this particular url file and we are able to see something in about page and if you go to like the main home page we can see hello world here but the problem in this particular approach is if we want to put certain html in here that time we are not able to fulfill what actually is required for creating html file just understand we can't put html dot h index dot html in here for displaying this hello world because we can't fit entire content for index.html in one file imagine if you have 10 functions and 10 files need to be rendered from this particular file and putting every html in this particular function is not a good idea that time so for fixing this particular thing django has something called as template think of templates as html files but in on steroids meaning it can do certain things which html file can't do that is it can call some loop it can render the logic based features i mean logic based function meaning if you want to show something when user is logged in only that time you can use if statement and you can run render login button if user is not logged in and sign out button if user is logged in okay i'll show you it in a while but let me just start by creating one basic template for creating template we just have to create templates folder in the main page i mean main folder structure that is templates and once i create templates here i can create whatever the templates i require once uh, before creating any kind of templates uh, i need to make sure i go to settings.py and i will see this templates variable in here that includes all these objects inside it uh, and the main focus um, the main thing i am focused on is uh, this dir here we are going to put uh, templates that is the folder name which we have given to here so this particular templates folder indicates this particular template let me start by creating template for a home page so home page template can be named anything but it's good choice if we just type it as home.html 
once i type home.html i can render out any kind of html in here so let me just render h2 and say hello i am from template okay so let me go here and let me use certain function which django already imported for me that is render we can just return render and we can send the template which is inside this particular folder that would be home.html once i type this thing and if i go here and refresh it gives me error saying the positional argument template name okay the template should have a name that would be home.html okay the error in this particular file is uh, i require i need to send a request as first parameter and i just have to refresh it here and the template is rendered i could have cut this particular scenario from this situation uh, or i might cut it uh, but uh, the thing is you need to understand that if we know how to fix this particular error then only we'll be able to become the best programmers in the world so best programmers in the world we become just by fixing the errors like this so i might not cut it from the video let me start by creating same template for uh, this particular about page so instead of sending about uh, http response uh, let me just remove it and render a template i need to put this request object uh, in while i render something from here and once i put the request object i can render the template name i know i haven't created it yet but let me go to templates folder and create one new template for this about dot html once i create about dot html i can render out template and i can tell them about us and when i go to about us page for here on us i will see the template itself that is about us so instead of just putting h2 and h1 h2 in the home page and about page we can just render out the temp the html itself with the all the things which we require and the shop name is my shop and i can just put h1 and say that welcome to my shop and i can just put certain things as lorem 5 which will give me just random 5 text once i put this if i go to home i'll see entire home page itself i can do same for about a dot html also and i can change here about us this particular thing will just get displayed in the top here like how we got my shop if we come here if we just go to about page you can see my shop about us welcome to um, not required welcome to we can just change it as about us so after i type this correctly we are able to move on now and we can see about us here so once we have created this about dot html and home dot html which is actually rendered from this particular view which is linked to this url file which just sends about page whenever the about is requested from this particular browser and the about page view gets rendered from views folder and it will send about.html that's a template which we can see here has certain html in it that's it for this video in next video we are going to work the steroid features of this particular template and we are going to nail it down
so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to this channel and see you in the next video hey guys my name is manjunath and in last video we have set up the views that we require that would be home page and about page and we have mounted the router properly so that uh, it loads uh, whenever we use uh, uh, the server which is running locally and as you can see the index uh, view is showing us uh, this particular html file that is the template uh, and if you go to slash about uh, then we will be able to see the about page but if you have noticed something here uh, in the home page and about page uh, you can see a lot of repeated stuff here that is from here till here the html is repeated and this repetition is fine if it is like very small like this but uh, when you have like lot of text like uh, for example if you have something like one now bar here and a uh, lot of things go there and you have to copy paste again and again to different pages uh, that is about page home page services page etc so in order to avoid that copy paste uh, imagine you copy paste it and uh, once if you copy paste and you if you want to change something for example if you change this uh, link as uh, about us uh, that time you have to go to every single page and you have to fix that particular link uh, so that's not a really easy way to code any kind of html file or as long as any kind of web application that's why we are going to use some kind of templating feature uh, which i mentioned in last video that is how django provides us the uh, templating and how we can use to do certain logical things here so first of all i want to create a base direct i mean base layout for this particular project i'll show you how it's it is done just have to create one new file name and we can name it as base.html once we name this particular file as base.html we need to uh, write any kind of html in here like if i just uh, type exclamatory and if i just type exclamatory and tab the entire uh, snippet is pasted here i showed it to you in last video so once this particular snippet is pasted we just have to give any kind of name here that would be my shop once i name this particular project uh, i mean this particular file uh, that is base.html so i can directly go to body here uh, and i can literally create some kind of block here if you don't understand this now don't worry but you will understand once i complete this particular project file and once i create it you will be like so much easy to work with the django so let me get started using django templating so i just have to put curly braces and percentage and you have seen it properly it is curly braces and percentage once i put this particular thing i can type block content and once i type block content i need to end that particular block that i can do by telling end block and i just have to type this much thing i don't have to write anything inside this once i write this particular thing now this particular base.html file is usable throughout any pages we create here so let me explain you what what does it mean so if i if you see here you can see my shop uh, my shop written over here okay so let me just uh, remove entire thing and just type h1 i'll just write it as hello world so if i just refresh here you can see there is nothing printed out here that indicates it, this particular page doesn't have any kind of title tag so how we can extend this particular base.html to this particular form.html file and if you are able to do this particular thing right then we'll be able to see the title of base.html in this particular file so let me show you how it is done just have to go to home.html and remove whatever the content you have 
Actually, we just have to type percentage symbol with the curly braces like how I written in the previous page, and we just have to type here extends, and we have to type the name of the file that is base dot html. Once I type this particular thing, now this particular page have access to that particular base dot html tag. But if I write something in here, it won't be displayed as of now because it doesn't know what particular thing to display here. That is in this particular file here, we need to make sure that particular hello world content displays, making this particular my shop remain same and it can display the hello world here. So let me go to home page and make this thing work. Just have to do exactly same like how I did here so I can just copy paste it you understand like focus here carefully so that you won't make any mistake once I type this block content and then block I just copy paste it from this particular file that is base.html you can directly come here and you can start typing whatever you want that fits to this left that is hello Django is awesome once I type this particular thing, if I refresh, you can see hello Django is awesome with my shop title over here. But if I go to slash about, I am seeing the same as my shop about us, which is inside this particular about HTML. In order to make this particular page work with the, that base HTML content, we just have to again do percentage uh, curly braces with the percentage symbol and we can type uh, extends and we can type here the name of the file which we want to extend it with the and once we write that uh, we need a content block uh, okay. uh, we don't forget percentage symbol here uh, once we put the percentage symbol and we can type uh, font block content uh, and here also we need to end the block which we started that is end block once i end block i can directly type whatever i want here and you can see about us with the my shop printed here so that's all for this video guys you have learned how you can like create the layouting easy but before we go i just want to like teach something else here uh, in this particular file, if you put something, uh, for example, if you put uh, some kind of text saying uh, my shop, uh, that time what we what it happens, you know, it is displayed in both files, that is about file as well as uh, index file. That's why it's so much easy for us to create any kind of link between every file. So that we don't have to repeat again and again. So easiest way to do this particular thing would be, for example, if I put one link here, which sends us to slash, that is home page, and if I put another link here, which sends us to about page, that is about, you can see how easy for me to do something here. It will go to about page, and it will go to home page. So it's so much easy with the Django to create this templating problem and as you can see uh, uh, templating problem solver and as you can see this particular page doesn't have any kind of repeated text only what is required in this home.html we can put here and everything else uh, that is CSS files uh, or any kind of script uh, everything can be linked with this base.html and we don't have to look at it again and again but it can be reused in home.html and about.html and tens of files which you create here and another thing which we can do is uh, instead of putting this particular thing here uh, we can create another file called as uh, we'll just create another file uh, and we'll name it as inc different people have different uh, Way of doing this but i like to keep it as inc that means includes and we can directly type navbar dot html once i name this as navbar dot html 
I can just cut this particular thing from this page, uh, which will make this go away in this page. Uh. I can directly come and paste it here, uh, and I can go here to the paste.html, uh, and instead of including, uh, instead of like uh, extending something, I can just include that file uh, in here. That we can achieve, it can be achieved by typing include uh, and uh, inc folder slash navbar dot html which is the file which we created here inside templating directory inc folder and inside that navbar dot html if i just put this particular thing still this particular thing works and you should understand how easy to make the content work in in this particular thing meaning you don't have to repeat any kind of thing imagine there are like seven links and if you change one particular link if we don't follow this layouting layouting feature, we have to go to 10 files and we have to edit manually the link of any one particular link which we change. Usually when we are developing something, we change, we tend to change the name of about to about us and different things. That's why this particular feature is very useful because you just have to come to this particular file and you just have to change something in here and every page will get that particular change. So let me create same for the footer also. Let me go to base.html. Uh, no, before I go to base.html, I just have to go to inc folder and I have to create a new file and we can name it as footer.html. And I'll just put a p tag which says copy copy right uh, my shop 2021 if i just do this uh, and if i come here and paste not paste i'll just copy this particular thing uh, and paste here uh, and change the name as footer.html uh, this autocorrect is giving me a problem in here but it's okay now it's fine so it gives us the this is little bit problematic in the ground so i'll just uh, put the footer tag in here then i'll just paste it inside this uh, so that works so you can see copyright my shop 2021 and if i go to about pages still i can see the same copyright message so that's all for this video guys don't forget to subscribe if you are liking this series so in next video we are going to create models and we are going to do some things with the database so i'm excited for it guys see you soon bye bye hey guys my name is manjanath and welcome back to my channel and in this particular video we'll be learning models and how we can do the migration so in last video, we were able to set up the templating uh, and we were able to create this base template, uh, which can be linked with home and about page uh, so that uh, everything is easier for us to work in the, in this particular project. So now we can proceed to create models and all those stuff. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I need to make sure that this particular page is at least looking better. So so I thought, let me just create some kind of CSS file and type it out all the CSS which is required to make this page at least look a little bit better. But instead of that, I'll be using Bootstrap, which is CSS framework for building some kind of website easily without having to code the CSS by ourselves. I'll just show you how it can be done. You just have to go to this particular page and this is get, get bootstrap.com and i'll just link this particular in thing i mean this particular website in the description so that you can directly copy it and or you can directly click on it and go to this page and once you go to this page just scroll down a little bit and copy this particular cdn entire link you have to copy once you copy this link just come back here and as we did the templating feature of uh, block content uh, we don't have to i mean 
we have set it up the layout we don't have to go to about page and home page and paste this particular css link we can directly go to base.html and if we paste the css link we are good to go and as you can see now the text is looking like this and once i pasted this particular file and if i refresh the text changes that indicates bootstrap is kicking in and now we are able to use any bootstrap class in our project so let me go to home page and let me style uh, before i go to home page let me style some things in the base only i want entire page to have a little bit of padding in the right and left that can be achieved by typing dot container and enter if you are using vs code or you can directly type whatever i have typed here and i'll just paste out so i'll just paste out whatever was left in this particular file once i have pasted it i can directly go here if i view it it will give me little bit of space from right to left i mean it's still in the right also but you can see you'll be able to see it in a while so once i do that let me go to include and style the nav bar instead of putting everything in here i'll just cut it for a while and let me type in the bootstrap classes for making this particular thing good i have just cut the data make sure it's still in your clipboard don't copy it again so i can type any bootstrap class which is available for me oops i'll i would like to start with the text center it will make the text center so that if i go here everything is centered out and bg gray so let's just make it more i don't think so so instead of that i can directly type bg primary so if i put bg primary i can type text white so bg primary i'll just make it as bg info this is like a bit better color and i i require little bit of space in the top and bottom so i can type so my but that gives me more space uh, not my just make sure it is py5 so once i do py5 i'll get little bit spacing in here so now the nav bar is looking at least decent if i go to about page it shows me about if i go to home page it shows me django is awesome now we are able to proceed with the doing some kind of modeling in this particular video so let me go to pages folder and in the pages folder if i click models i'll be able to create any kind of model in this particular video i just want to show you how we can create one page where many products are displayed with the its title and little bit description and pricing so my model should have similar things so let me start by creating the model here just have to go to models.py in the pages folder and we can we have to create a class name we have to create class which can be named as anything but for a better understanding i'll just keep it as product which is the name of the product which we are creating that is we want the products to be displayed here once i create the class i have to use this particular models as constructor and we can use it as models dot model sorry models dot model once i use this particular thing i'll be able to create all the fields which we required in order to display the product itself so i'll just type out the fields which we require that would be we require product name i'll just set it as name because it's product model so name and we require description and we require the price of it and another thing we might require is created at that is that is the time when this particular file is created so name can be a text so i will just name can be a chart field so i just have to type model that is type uh, made the type here should be models and i will just type models models here and it can be chart 
field. So if I type jar field, it needs to have a length for it that is max length and I'll just keep it as 255. You can choose whichever the length is better for your project but I'll just keep it as 255 and description can be a text field. Uh, so for that we have to type text field or text choices. So text choices it is text field. So once I put the text field here it doesn't require max length because it will give us the sufficient text to put it as description and price usually usually people like to keep it as number field but uh, I will keep uh, for uh, this tutorial as a char field yes, why not so I will just keep it max length as 255 once I finish doing that uh, we have to type uh, created at so whenever this particular products get created I want uh, this field to be filled so it can be done by typing model start uh, date time field and the value for this can be auto add auto now add and we can set this particular thing true so that whenever this particular product is added the time gets updated automatically and with the date so once we write this particular thing we need to continue and migrate this particular model so how we can do that we just have to come to terminal here and you have to press ctrl c which will stop the server and we have to type python 3 manage.py make migrations if i type this particular command it will create a migration for our pages app and it will tell create model product once we make this particular migration work that time we will be able to go to this particular file here and it will create a migration which will update our database so now you might be thinking i didn't create any kind of database or any kind of link to mysql or mongodb or postgres postgres but you have to understand that django by default comes with db.sqlite I have told about this in first video saying uh, there is db.sqlite file uh, which I will explain in this particular video. So that db.sql3 is created by Django whenever we created this project in the beginning. Uh, so if you go to settings.py you will find a database section. Uh, in, the, in this database section you can change uh, the backend links to MySQL, MongoDB, PostgreSQL or anything and by seeing your database you have to type whatever the required authentication things for that particular database that would be if you are using MySQL you need to pass which whether it's local host or some remote host username password database name etc but we are using SQLite which comes by default with the MongoDB so it automatically puts it for us uh, in this particular folder because of that uh, we'll be able to use uh, this model uh, I mean this particular database uh, and whenever we created models here we were able to directly make the migration work but if you see here uh, the 18 unapplied migrations we have created a new migration here but it's still not applied because if you run the server it will give me error saying you have 19 unapplied migration that means if you run this particular command that is python3 manage.py make migration it will just create the migration it won't run the migration if you want to run the migration you have to type python3 manage.py and migrate so if i write this particular command it will migrate everything for us and if you change something in this particular file it will automatically generate a migration for us for example if i add here sale is equal to models dot chart field it will just indicate us whether sales what kind of sales is available for this particular product 
So if I just type models of character and if I save it, now if I run migrate migrate command, it won't migrate us anything. But you have to type that command called Python 3 and dot py make migrations, which will create the migration option for us. Just have to type any kind of when we, whenever we add some kind of new field it will just tell us to type something here so we'll just type it as date time uh, no not date time time zone dot now so if you just type this particular thing it will create the migration for us don't worry about this much because it just said that if we don't have any if you add new field it can't be directly empty so we need to have some kind of uh, default value that is time zone dot now so it won't do any kind of extra thing for us uh, but it will just uh, let us create uh, a new migration file for us uh. so making this migration file uh, will help us uh, to migrate the thing uh, which we can do by saying uh, ph uh, python 3 and it dot py migrate so it will create uh, another new migration which will apply it to the data field. so if you go to MySQL, I mean, if you used MySQL with this particular project, I didn't use MySQL, but if you will use the MySQL, then if you go to PHP MyAdmin, you will be able to see all the database name, which uh, which also include a table named the product and all the details which is required, which we put in this particular file. So that's it for this video, guys. If you if you want to like know more what we are going to do in next video just see that here it, it created already admin and auth migrations so that means in the next video we'll be working with the slash admin which is mysterious for us now but uh, let me just run the server here okay the server is running now and if i come here and if i refresh this admin page is there but we don't know the username and password which we'll do it in the next video so that's all for this video guys don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video bye bye hey guys my name is Manimath, and in last video we were successfully able to create models and make the migration so and in this video we are going to look at how we can work with the django administration that is the when we go to slash admin django provides us a username and password which we don't know what, what is username and password and uh, how we can like uh, use it so if you once we go inside this page you would be like amazed to see what and all django provides us by default so first of all we have to create the user which can be long used to log into this username and password so let me go to command line and let me just clear it out first once i clear it out i can directly type a command called python 3 as you best it right everything starts with python 3 manage.py and make super user so this command won't work because we have to use create super user see i made one mistake and django told me what needs to be done so let me just change the command as python 3 manage.py create a super user if i directly type this i made again type mistake so let me correct this problem this always happens when you be programmed so you don't have to think uh, like why i'm making mistake you will also make mistake uh, and when you are doing mistake you just have to go back and correct it and we have to fix it so let me type this thing properly create a super user so if i type this particular thing properly that time it will ask me what username i need to type so let me type it as manjanath which is also will be default if we don't type anything but let me just type it as my manjanath and if i do enter it will ask me to type a email address i just put one dummy email address manjanath at manjanath dot com and password i can keep anything but let me just type one two three four five six seven eight nine 
And if I just enter it, it will ask me again to type the password. It will just tell me to bypass the password validation, huh? but I am a super user, so I can just type yes. So it will just bypass it. Huh? Don't do it on production. Keep your password a like, little bit complex and quick. Huh? So now we got the username huh? that is Manjunar here, huh? and the password huh? which I have set it huh? to how to set it for yourself. Huh? I just set it as one two three four five six seven eight nine. So long time. If I just click login, it won't let me do anything because server is not running. So make sure your server is running and I can directly type 513 and it's .py run server. And it will allow me to run the server and I should be logged in by default. If you are not logged in, just type just type username and password and you will be able to see this page. And this page is by default created for us by Django. We don't have to do anything. It's just awesome to see this particular page because you can directly go to users and you can add user and the user which I have created is still here and I can go and edit it. I don't think any other framework for provides you this particular ease of use user interface by default that we don't have to install any kind of third third party package. So in this particular thing it would have been very like really useful if this particular product comes to us so don't worry django provides us how we can like add products here edit products here and update and look all the products so we are going to do it in this particular video in a while so let me go to this particular folder and uh, i'm in pages app let me close this migration folder which i have opened okay so once i close this migration uh, I have one file named admin.py. In this particular folder, I can register the model which I have created in this particular file. So let me just import it first. So in order to import, I can directly type from dot models import the model which I required that is product model. So let me just go to admin.py and make it import product. And once I import this model, I can type admin dot sites dot register and I can put this product model in here. Once I put this particular product model, it will give me error because I just have to type site. I don't need sites. So once I change this particular thing properly and make sure it is admin dot site dot register otherwise it will give us the error here and if you include this particular model inside it and if you go now here and refresh you will be amazed the products model is already here and we can directly come here and add products that is just awesome i don't think any of the framework provides you this much ease of user management that's why django is awesome for uh, freelancers and all because you can use this particular thing and you can build the product i mean you can create the client projects just by creating one model you will be able to add it update it edit it with awesome user interface so let me just add few products and just add it as an android phone and description i can keep it as this is android phone and price i can keep anything so just keep it as 200 2000 rupees and sale, you can say no sale by label. Okay, if I just click save, it will create an entire product for us, but it will tell me this as product dot object. And if I add another product, Apple phone, this is new Apple phone, price will be 2500 for this particular banner. Sale hundred rupees, hundred dollars, hundred off on MRP. So if I just save it, it will add the another project uh, product. But it is not giving us like good use easy usable name. So I just have to go to this particular file, and I have to define a function 
for the underscore underscore strr and it will it gave me the suggestion uh, because of the plugin which i am using uh, you don't have plugin don't worry but you just have to type uh, def uh, underscore underscore this is double underscore uh, str uh, and uh, double underscore in the bracket uh, just put self uh, and uh, you can just return uh, self dot name and if i just refresh here now it will give me okay i have to migrate it properly okay now we are able to see the apple phone you don't have to migrate it just make sure it's saved and you will be able to refresh it here so once you have refreshed it and the product is available now we can go back to the main file of here and instead of displaying hello Django is awesome here we just have to make sure this products which we have added in the admin section displayed here so let me go to views of this particular page by using this particular view let me just make sure i will be able to display the products in here so i just have to go to this particular section of the home page and first we need to import the model which we require it can be imported from from dot model import the model name is product so import product once i import the product i need to set a variable that would be products is equal to product dot and we'll be able to do different methods here but i need to use objects dot all this will give me all the objects which are available in the product model that is the product table in the database so once i get that product i just need to create a data object and inside this data object i can make a products column products which will just create give us one data object and we can pass it while we are rendering this particular view that is home.html and we'll just pass it out here and once we pass it out here we will be able to use it in the home.html so as of now there is just hello django this is awesome here if i just refresh it will just go hello django this is awesome okay but we need to look through those products which we got from products here even though we mentioned here data we don't have to use data object we just have to render through products object so i just have to come here in the home page and i have to create one for loop and make sure you put this syntax only that is percentage symbol with the curly braces and i can just type product in products and i'll be able to use this particular product object inside this but i'll just make sure this is ended that is end for okay and whatever type inside this inside this is it will be in the loop so let me just show you by hitting h2 and i can just type product dot title which will give me the title and if i type product product dot description it will give me the description so if i just refresh it the two products are displayed here and this description is description is not being displayed because I, I might have spelled it wrong so let me just copy paste it from the other if i just try just paste it properly it should be able to display the description okay it's not displaying the title property because i there is no title it's just the name so let me just refresh it once i refresh i'll be able to see android phone and apple phone here and if we go to slash admin in another page slash admin that time we'll be able to add a new product that can be linux laptop and this is linux laptop and price can be 2500 the sale big discount of 
500 dollar and if i just save it the linux laptop is added and i just have to come here and refresh it the and the linux laptop is available i can also put some other details for example i can put the price it will just give me the price of the product and i can also put the created at the that will just give us the data when it was created django formats it everything nicely but uh, we can use bootstrap to make it look even better so just have to create a div here dot row which will give me the closing and ending div so let me just put it outside this thing it will give me a row and if i just take everything in here and okay, this is supposed to be outside this thing and make sure you cross check it and make sure everything is fine and it looks exactly like in mine so let me just copy it and tell the folders md dash 4 it will give me the columns these are our bootstrap classes so you don't have to like focus much on this thing so just make it look a little bit better by say it card card dash body p3 it will give a little bit a much better view than existing one so it will just it will just let us make the things look a little bit beautiful than by default and if i delete some kind of if i just modify some kind of product here for example instead of apple phone i just uh, type uh, apple phone updated then it will show me the updated version in here that is apple phone updated so in here if i go and select something and uh, delete it uh, then it will ask me should I like delete it then as I click it the product is deleted and it's gone from here also so it's very useful if you are doing freelancing the Django is very useful for this particular scenario because the back end is the crud functionality of admin panel is already hooked in we just have to go to admin.py and register the model which we create in this particular file that is the product model here so that's it for this video guys and uh, see you in the next video bye bye